now going to do an install of Ubuntu 1804 as a virtual machine under the VMware hypervisor using a Red Hat 7 host system running VMware player. So first thing we need to do is to create a new virtual machine and for that I already have the uh, Ubuntu install disk mounted uh, in the virtual CD drive and we'll give it a name for the user as LF student with a username of student and we have to give a password which I've done and then for the name let's just call it Ubuntu and then on the host machine I want to have a certain place I want to put it uh, rather than my home directory I want it in a, on a disk that has a lot of space and then let's allocate 30 gigabytes of space and I prefer to have it as one big file rather than multiple files or slices uh, I find that clutters my system less and really that's all you have to do to start setting up the install but it's better to click on customize hardware and increase the amount of memory from one gigabyte to four in, in my case and I might as well take advantage of having multiple processors so I'll let it use all four processors on this host machine and then I'll just click on finish and uh, it will start the install after a couple of harmless messages about how the virtual machine graphics driver doesn't permit accelerated graphics performance now the beautiful thing about the Ubuntu install on this recent version is that I am done there are no more choices to make I don't have any more parameters to specify etc if I hadn't been installing in a virtual machine it would have asked me information like username and password at this stage but it was able to pick that up because of the intelligent way that VMware can handle Ubuntu so I'm doing this in real time you know, if you can read the messages you see it just created the, the main file system on the system and now it's going through the stage of copying all the files over to the hard disk or I should say the simulated hard disk now this takes a little bit of time so I'll pause the recording for a few seconds so you don't have to watch not much happening I skipped about a minute or so and now it says it's almost finished copying files it's showing a bunch of different blurbs for various features in this Bionic Beaver or Ubuntu 18.04 release the status bar has reached all the way to the right so it should be almost done and now it's doing the actual install of the system so it's copied all the files it needs over to the hard disk and it's doing the actual configuration so once again I believe I'll pause for a little while so you don't have to sit here and watch not much happening pause for about a minute now it says it's configuring hardware so it's finding all the hardware devices in the system making sure it has the right device drivers for it etc it's now configuring the bootloader the grub and now it's doing cleanup it's getting rid of packages which were only needed during the install and of course that's rolling by far too fast to be readable and so it's doing a little bit more package installation I think I'll pause again for a little while so it reached the end of the status bar and now it's doing the reboot and shortly I should be getting a login prompt if 
If you notice, it's installing OpenVM tools. That's a package of special drivers and configuration stuff that's used when you're running it as a guest under VMware Hypervisor. And we've reached the login screen running under the greeter. So I'll just log in as student. And oops, I typed in the wrong password, I suppose. Yep. And now the system's running. There's a few introductory uh, messages here, and I'll just click through them to get to a fully up system. And then just to see what really happened here, if I right click, I can open up a terminal. And then I'm going to run the command df for disk free dash t to show me what type of file systems ha I have in H to print out the results in megabytes and gigabytes. And I see that in the main file system, I have 30 gigabytes of space, of which I'm using 5.3, and it's an ext4 file system. When we install CentOS, we need to actually specify the type of file system, the size of the partition, etc. But Ubuntu made choices that it thought were best. Likewise, uh, we won't talk about this now, but if I look at swap files, you'll we'll see that there is a swap file of about one and a half gigabytes created uh, instead of a swap partition. Usually distributions create swap partitions. So that's all there is to install the latest uh, version of Ubuntu. Uh, absolutely nothing to do during the install. It makes what it thinks is sensible decisions for everything. And after the system is up and running, you can then go into the package manager and put in exactly what you need and configure the system in other ways. If you need a more flexible installation to begin with, you can make such choices uh, when you start, but we, we took the easy path here.